Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining from wherever you are. We're just going to wait for a few more minutes just to allow everybody to join. So in the meantime, just sit back, relax, sip that cup of coffee you have in front of you. We know that most attendees are joining us from North America, so it's morning there. Hope it's not too early for you. Right. Okay, let's get started. Welcome again. This is part five of our customer success SketchUp webinars that brings to you industry specific workflows by our in house specialists like myself or some guests outside of Trimble that kindly offer their expertise. Today, we'll be talking about best practices around early stage and urban design using SketchUp. My name is Aristotemos Komnenos. I am an urban designer and a customer success manager here at SketchUp. Together with me, we have a very special guest, Dr. Yernay Vidmar, who is the co-founder and CEO of Modelur. Yernay, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Actually, Yernay, it's funny because we are both uh, coming live from the Balkans. I myself, I am from, uh, I am in Greece, in Athens. You might tell that from the thick accent that is coming out of my mouth. And Yernay, you are just around the corner. You are in uh, Ljubljana, correct? Yes, we are from Ljubljana, Slovenia, European-based startup working on urban design extension for SketchUp. Awesome. Actually, I would love to hear where you all are coming from when you are joining us from. So please take a minute in the chat to tell us uh, where you're joining us from today. Now, a little bit of housekeeping before we start. This session is being recorded and will be distributed to everybody by email a day later. The audience will remain muted throughout the session, but please ask any questions you may have into the question box that you will find in the control panel of go to right corner of your screen and in that same panel you will also find a handout tray where you will be able to download a pdf with some material about the stuff we're going to be presenting today and also some links that will allow you to download some of the material that we will be actually demoing so take a moment to download that and finally at the end of this session there will be a survey that we would love for you to take to tell us a little bit about what you do in SketchUp, how we did today, but also to give us some ideas about what you would like to see next in this webinar series. One last thing, if you're interested to, for more webinars and other events, head over to blog.sketchup.com slash events to find out what, what else we have in store for you. Now, we have a lot of ground to cover today, so be aware of that and we might go a little bit over time, Definitely, we want to answer everybody's questions. And while you're typing in your questions during the session, we have a number of uh, uh, several members of our team that will be answering live. And me and Yernej, we will be taking questions at the end of the session. However, as I said, we might go over time a little bit to make sure we answer all of those questions. So uh, we hope that you will find the content interesting enough to stick around until the end. So let's just uh, jump right in. I'm going to switch off my camera now, just so you have full screen mode of my uh, screen. And let me go over to my SketchUp file. Perfect. Now, just a heads up, the stuff that we will be talking about today is, let's say, at intermediate level. So if you are completely new to SketchUp, you might find it hard to follow a few things but don't worry because the purpose of this session is to show you what is possible with SketchUp. Rest assured that with the handout that you can download and the recording that you will receive, you will get a chance to follow through the steps at your own pace. Now, today's session is split in two parts. In the first part, I'm going to speak about native SketchUp functionality. And in the second part, Yerne will take over to show us how to take that same workflow one step further using SketchUp and Modelur. But let's start with the native SketchUp functionalities. In the first 20 minutes, approximately, I'm going to talk about three things. How to get started with a project in uh, SketchUp with our enhanced ad location feature. Then how to create smart conceptual massing with dynamic components. 
And finally, how to take that great work we have done in SketchUp and put it in a, into a 2D document or presentation using a layout. Now, let's get started with the application and let's open up a fresh file. One of the most important things when you start an urban design project is to have a good survey of the site that you will be working on. That could ideally be a DWG file that you can import in SketchUp, a PDF, or even an image. However, sometimes you might have absolutely nothing, and this is where the ad location feature comes in. Some of you might be familiar with it, but for those of you who aren't, ad location is a feature that allows you to geolocate your model and import an aerial image and a terrain elevation model straight into your SketchUp file. To do that, just head over to File, Geolocation, and Add Location, or just right click on your toolbar, find the location toolbox, and click on the first icon that says Add Location. That's exactly the same thing. Now that will open up a new window that looks very much like Bing Maps or Google Maps, and all you have to do is type the address that you want to bring in. In this case, we are in uh, Superior, Colorado, down in Colorado, and all you have to do next is select region. And here is where the new functionality comes in. Up until now, we only offered one provider, which was Digital Globe. Now we have added one more, which is Nearmap. And you would say, why is that different? Well, this is high resolution image, uh, high resolution uh, aerial imagery. Just a heads up he that Nearmap is only available for North America. And actually, you can see the areas that is available by zooming out and those are indicated in blue color. And it's also a paid for feature. So while Digital Globe remains a free feature and you can bring in any area limits in the world, Nearmap is a paid for feature. It has a minimum of $8 patches and 200 tiles. So after you select your region, you can adjust that import level and the number of tiles, the size of the area you want to import and click purchase tiles. Now, I am not going to go through the parts uh, process, but as a matter of fact, I have downloaded this already and imported in this file. And I have also imported that same location using our previous provider, Digital Globe, just to show you the difference between the two. Now, you see that there is a significant difference in resolution. And actually, if you want to see that on your own, in the handout that we have distributed, if you go to the second page, you will find two links that will allow you to download both those files from 3D Warehouse. Now, often an aerial is not enough, and you might need to create additional context like the surrounding buildings. While with a higher resolution image, it's now easier than ever to trace over a building that previously could just be a pixel, to create those buildings and just push pull. But admittedly, for such an area as large as this, it might be very time consuming to create all those buildings one by one. So what if I told you that there was a way to bring all the building context just with one click, just like that? Well, it's actually true. And it, while it is not possible to do that natively in SketchUp, there are a couple of extensions that allow you to do that. And in fact, Modelure is one of those extensions. So if you want to find out how to bring instant context into your site, stick around for the second part where Hirneg is going to show us how to do that with Modelure. Now let's move on to the next topic, how to quickly create conceptual masking in SketchUp using dynamic components. Let's assume that we have laid out a basic framework for our urban design project like this one, and we are ready to start giving shape to our ideas. Now, as you all know, SketchUp is great at creating quick, boxy geometries like this. Let me make that a component and start copying them around to create our design proposal for this site. However, how can we do that in a faster, more efficient way and also in a smarter way? This is where dynamic components comes in. Let me get rid of those. Now, dynamic components is a native functionality in SketchUp, and essentially every component could be a dynamic component. All you have to do is right click, find the dynamic components option, and click on the attributes, do the same thing, and also open the component options. Now, 
this window of the attributes is what we call the programming side of dynamic components and the options is the user interface. So this is where we will build our component and this is what the user will see in the end. Now, you might have noticed when I created my component that there are some default attributes that you can also find in the entity info right here, such as price, size, owner, IFC classification, etc. But now, if I want to bring any custom attributes on top of that, the way to do it is with dynamic components. All I have to do is click here and type whatever I want. So in this case, I will add construction here, and I will add one more, which is the overall area. Now for the construction here, I'm going to click on the details, and I will specify this attribute to be something that the user can select from a list. So I will select the last option, and add a few values. I will say 2021, 2022, and 2023. And hit apply. The moment I do that, there is a new attribute that surfaces on my options uh, window and allows user to select any of those three values. Now, for the overall area, I'm going to do something a little bit get it. I'm going to first bring in a default attribute, which is the size, which actually gives me all the values for the three dimension of my box. And I will create a formula here, very much like I would do in a spreadsheet. So I would say equals length X multiplied by length Y and hit enter. Now, I also want this attribute to be surfaced in the options window. So I will say users can see this attribute and hit apply. And there it is. Now, as I am scaling my object, the user can now see this overall area. Now, dynamic components can be as simple as that or as complex as you like. Actually, for this exercise, I have created a component that I will bring in now from my components tray in the urban design folder. And this one is actually very similar to the one we saw before. So I can stretch it around and I can see the overall area. But this time, the overall area is calculated across all the floors of my buildings. And I even introduced a geometric pa uh, parameter here. So when I stretch it on the z-axis, it will recalculate the number of floors. So now it's easier than ever to just copy that around and stretch this to make my idea easier to communicate and easier to calculate. Now, if you're curious about how this dynamic component works, again, in the handout, in the second chapter, you will find a link that allows you to download this dynamic component and a video that will show you step-by-step -step how I created this component in case you want to follow through or you want to create your own. Now, the other cool thing about dynamic components is that you can find them in 3D Warehouse. So if I click 3D Warehouse here, let's say I want to look for a parking module. I will type parking and in the advanced filter, I will select dynamic components and that will show me only dynamic component results. Let's grab this one here and load it straight into my SketchUp model. Similar to what my building was doing, if I stretch that, it will recalculate the number of uh, parking sizes and I can even change the degree, okay? So there is a number of cool things that dynamic components are doing. They can change color, they can completely change form. So it's a great thing to go out and explore and it's very useful for urban design workflows. Now, the next thing I want to show is how to visualize land uses in SketchUp. So to do that, I'm going to head over to Tags. And by the way, for all of you who are using version 2019 and earlier, this is named Layers. But now we have renamed that to Tags. So just be aware of that. And here I have created a few tags, uh, commercial, residential, retail, and parking. And all I'm going to do is select those buildings and assign those land uses to them. So I will say this is residential, this is retail, and those two are commercial. Now, a really cool thing to visualize that is by going to the tags tray again and hitting that details button right here, there's an option to color by tag. So the moment I do that, what SketchUp is doing is it's color coding my entire model based not on the material or texture of the object, but the color of the tag or layer, if you're using 2019 and earlier. 
which is a really cool way to visualize uh, things like land use. Now, I'm going to get rid of those because I have two design options ready, option two and option, option one and option two, and their respective land use scenes. And the last thing we're gonna do before jumping to the last chapter, which is the layout, is to show you how to create schedules based on your land use. Now, let's double click here. To do that, I'm going to bring in another native functionality, which is generate reports. Go to file and generate report, and that will bring up a new window. Generate report allows you to build templates based on formulas that will filter through all the attributes inside the SketchUp model and create schedules out of that. So I will create a new template to show you how this is done. So here I have a list of all the attributes of all the geometries inside my SketchUp model. And you see that the default attributes are designated with a SketchUp icon, while the default attributes, like the ones we created in dynamic component, are designated with a dynamic component uh, icon. So in this case, I'm going to bring in the layer and the overall area. Now, I want this table to be grouped by layers, so I'm just gonna drag that up here and leave the overall area here. And I'm going to hit the gear button and select total sum because I want to have a total sum for each one of my land use. I will select current selection here and nesting level one, just to make sure that the report runs only for the objects that I'm selecting. So I will select all my buildings and run report. And there you have it. This is a schedule of all my land uses and their overall area. I'm going to download that file and save it as a CSV file. I'm gonna call it landuse.csv, overwrite that. Perfect. So now we're ready to move on to the next step, which is layout. So once you have your design options ready and your scene set up, all you have to do is head over here, layout and send to layout. Let's save that model. Now, for everyone that has SketchUp installed, layout is also installed. It's a different application, but it's the 2D documentation companion to SketchUp. What that means is that you can bring in any SketchUp model and put it in a paper space, right? So I just selected an A3 template in this case. And the first thing you see is this viewport, which is not a static image, but it is a window towards your SketchUp model. So I'm gonna show you what that means in just a second. So if I double click this viewport, you will see I get a navigation tool. That means I can spin around, zoom in, zoom out. And once I click outside, it freezes again. So any changes I make in the camera angle, it just stays. And the cool thing about this is that it's dynamically connected to my SketchUp model. Now let's see what that means. Let's make that a little bit smaller, render again. And now I'm going to bring the schedule that we just created with generate reports in SketchUp. I think I might have a little bit of luck. Oops, I think layout just crashed on me, which is a thing I love to happen during webinars. We're gonna try again. In the meantime, just to let you know that into that last section of the second page, you will find links to uh, skill builders about layout. There is a whole series that um, Aaron prepared for layout, so it would be great uh, for you that are complete beginners to layout. So let's open up that file again. Right, so this is the viewport that we have imported before. So all I wanna do is bring in the schedule that we created in SketchUp. I'm gonna go to file, insert, and select that land use CSV that we created which comes in here as an unformatted table. Now, the really great thing about layout is that you can customize it in a way that all the assets look the way that you want. To do that, we're going to use scrapbooks. Scrapbooks is a collection of assets and styles that you can use to all your projects over and over again, such as drawing titles that you can just drag and drop, or blocks like trees, or even styles, right? And in this case, I want my tables to look in a very specific way. 
So I have this saved here in my scrapbook. I can take my eyedrop tool, click and apply. Now, let's see what it means to be dynamically connected with your SketchUp file. So if I go back to my SketchUp file right here, I will make some changes to some of my buildings. I will reduce the floor here, increase that height, and maybe even change the land uses. So I will make those two residential and I will make that commercial. I'm going to hit save and I will also re-export my generated report to reflect the changes that I have just done. Again, go to file, generate report. And just run it, download, and I will overwrite that previous file. Now let's go back to our layout file. And I'm going to click on this viewport and right click update model reference. Might take a while to load. It really depends on your file sizes. In this case, I have an aerial image in there of high resolution, and that's what makes it a little bit uh, slow to load. Once this is updated, I will just right click and render model. And now you see immediately the visual changes in the geometry. And the same thing happens with the table. So if I right click and update table reference, you see those metrics immediately change. Now let's do one more thing. Let's uh, duplicate this page to create from that same viewport a top view without even going to SketchUp. So I'm just going to expand my view here. And this is actually a feature that was introduced in 2020. So I'm going to um, just go and override a few aspects of my viewport. So in this case, I will choose top, click ortho, and select the scale. By the way, you cannot do that in SketchUp. You can only assign scales in layout. Okay, so here I have it. And to show you another functionality really quickly before I hand it over to Yernay, I showed you before that I have two design options. So I'm going to go and duplicate this page. And Select, let's get rid of those labels. Select this model, and this time in my SketchUp model, rather than overriding my camera, I will override the visibility of my tags, which is something that we introduced again in version 2020. So I will go option two and disable option one, just render that viewport again, and there you have it. We have immediately our second design option, just like that. And one last thing that was introduced actually in the latest update just a few days ago, I will also change the way that my site looks again straight from layout. So I want my site to, has, to have a dust line. So I'm just going to head over to the default here and specify that as a different line type and also make it a little bit thinner. Click OK, right click and render model again. So just like that, I can have different line types, different line colors for its tag, all in that same layout viewport. So all that uh, is an update that happened in 2020.2. So if you haven't downloaded, go ahead and try it over. Now, that's all I had for today. Uh, I'm gonna head it over to Jernay, who is going to talk about similar workflows, but taking it a step further with some automation from Modelur. So Jernay, over to you. Thank you, Aris. Uh, thank you, Aris, for this great introduction, which shows how useful SketchUp can be out of the box when it comes to urban design. Now, let's take a look at how we can make it even better using Modeler, a SketchUp extension made for urban design. At the end of this session, we will provide you also with an email so you can reach out to us and get your exclusive webinar license to give Modeler a try. In this part of the session, we will first take a look at how to install extensions, then how to use Modeler as a basic modeling tool that speeds up your workflow three to five times. Following this, we will connect SketchUp directly to Excel so you can do your own calculations in real time. 
Then we will check how interactive 3D zoning works and conclude with GIS import and export capabilities. There is a lot to cover, so let's get started. And don't worry, you will get all the files I will show you in the handout after the session. So, in case you don't have Modular installed or you don't know how to install extensions, let's just look at that. You first need to go to Window, Extension Warehouse, and a new window will open up. Let me just close this one. Um, in here, in this case, we will search for Modular. Now, Extension Warehouse is Warehouse is a really rich ecosystem which offers a lot of different extensions for different tasks. So you might want to do some research on what's available, available there. Some of them are free, some of them are commercial. So once you have this one, you just click install and Modular will be installed and ready to run inside SketchUp. If you don't see the toolbar, you need to go to view, toolbars, and make sure Modular is checked here. I'll just go close. I will append it to the toolbar and click blue modular icon to start modular. Once it's initialized, you will see its user interface. Here, I will go to modeling and show you the basic functionality, how to model buildings. First, I will just create a floor plan that of the building or the tower that I want to build on this building that I already have here. To do so, I have just created the face and Modular already selected it for me. And then I click on the Create Building button. Now, Modular created a building based on some predefined parameters, which I can always change. And since Modular is completely integrated with SketchUp, you can use its built-in tools like Scale tool to, to scale it up. And as you release it, you will see that number of stories adapt. Another way of changing such buildings is to go into the user interface, switch to the Building tab, and specify it by the number. So let's go with a stories. And as you can see here, there are quite a few parameters that you can set for each specific buildings. This, in terms of SketchUp, these are not the components like what Avis has been showing you, but they are actually SketchUp groups. Now, what I want to do is I want to create a complex building or mixed use building. To do so, I will just select a few of the simple buildings, one sitting on top of the another, and click on the third button here, which is Create Complex Building. Now, what this will do is it will merge those groups into a single group. So in terms of SketchUp, this is just a simple group of groups, which I can still enter and modify on a, on a simple building level. So I can change this part maybe to be just three stories high, but they, maybe I also want to change that each story is four stories, uh, four meters high. Of course, if needed, you can go and change units from meters to feet. Now, this is just the basic modeling. There, there are some other tools that you can use, like the split tool to quickly split the buildings and so on. But since we don't have too much time, I will skip those. What we are interesting, interested in now is the data that comes out of our model. For this, I will head over to survey. And I have a few options here. I can show the data for selected building and all the data them that i'm selecting here is actually visible directly in my inside my 3d model and then whenever i click a building i see the numbers related to this building i have an option for basic which shows me just some basic information about the building or full and as you can see whenever i change the building all the data is also being updated so if i go here you can see all the numbers are updated on the fly so i have the option to show the data for the selected building i have also the option to show the, the a bit different data for city blocks because in this case we have two city blocks it's a small infill development but there are some other numbers that are being calculated out of it such as floor area ratio and site coverage of course you can also go to the full to see also what is the parking space in the visit and so on. And then you also have the option to, to see the data for the plot area. Plot area is my complete model. So whatever I have in my model is displayed here, summed up in this one. So in this case, I want to show also, or I want to check because uh, what the garage size would need to be to provide enough parking spaces, because I see that at the moment I'm lacking 707 parking spaces. To do so, I will just quickly select this building and change its use from residential to parking. 
as you can see i'm instantly getting closer to zero but it's not enough because what we are doing now we is that this building is instead of requiring new parking spaces it provides them so this way we can quickly sketch the building and see what is roughly the size of the building that we would need to build to have enough parking spaces for this complete development of course we can also grab it and put it underground and further modify it there i'll just put it back here now when it comes to data this is not all we have another options set of options so you can go and export urban design control values as a csv and this will get you the data that aris has been showing you which you can instantly use in in uh, layout but there are also other things like open urban control data table which will show you your complete set of data integrated in a table that that is part of sketchup or modeler and as you can see here when i click a building it gets marked in in my window so this way i can quite easily either select something here and it gets selected in 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 sketchup or i can select something in sketchup and it gets selected here it's also sortable and so on so it's it's another way of getting to the data but the one that we've just added lately and i believe it's the most interesting is is the live connection to excel so this one can be engaged through extensions modeler send modeler data to excel what this will do is it will open up excel to which each time you you make any design move in your model the data is pushed to it uh, the data is pushed to the modeler live data tab and whenever i do any change to my model the data here is being refreshed and now in this example tab that i have here i have some linked cells as you can see and i could do my my own calculations to to get the data that is not provided by default in modeler and have it updated in real time so let's go here and maybe check this building and change its land use from a residential to residential tower as you can see this is being updated on the fly here in my model and if i had any other formulas being connected to it i would have it uh recalculate have them recalculated as i'm changing my design now heading over to uh, interactive 3d zoning this is a completely it's a new technology or unique technology that you can only find with modelers for sketchup there is no other application we are aware of that has something like this and what it does is it takes the basic rules of the zoning ordinance and embeds them into SketchUp in a way that modeler can read them and uh, act accordingly. So let me demonstrate by example. When I select this building and move it from one city block to another, you can see that it's adapting the height and the use of the building. And one another thing that you can notice here is that city block is becoming red. If I go to the city block, I can see that permitted FAR is 2.5. And if I go to the city block survey, I will see that for this city block, my floor area ratio is 2.55. So I'm exceeding it and we are not getting building permit for this. So we need to make it a bit smaller. But now it's a bit hard to get it exactly to the, to the, to the right side. So what I will do in this case is I will go to building and I will actually enter the proper value manually since i know i've done i've done it thousand times now i know this is the number and this is what gets me to the maximum potential of this site if i make it any larger let's say for one meter only it becomes red although there is no visible difference but one is inside the limits and another one isn't now i'm maybe not completely uh, I, I don't maybe completely like the shape and position of the building. I can always move it around, but I want to stretch it maybe a bit in this direction while keeping it in, inside the, the limitation. So what I will do is I will click here to keep built area when scaling buildings manually. And then when I scale it in one direction, modeler will make sure that it scales it in another so that we are keeping our FAR and site coverage. This gives me a quick way of modifying the buildings to, to stay compliant with the rules and at the same time focus on the design that I'm working on. This way we can quickly create a few design alternatives. In this case I will just go here, explode and click on create buildings 
And as you can see, uh, the buildings are now all created according to the heights defined and land uses. Of course, you can always go and change the height and go outside of the rules, but in this case, you will need to explain to the municipality why it is that you want to do something different. There is a lot of flexibility here that you have to, to change your model and adapt it according to your client's needs. So let me just go here to uh, ending model of this one, because in here what I want to show you is we have actually created two design alternatives of this model, and we have it available here under scenes. I have just created uh, them via view, animation, add scene. This way we can quickly add different design alternatives, as you can see. And if I go here and switch over to plot area full, you will see that also the data is being updated. So this one yields FAR 2.38, while this one is at 2.45. So we can quickly and easily compare different design alternatives, not just in terms of the design, but also in terms of numbers. And one important thing here is that if you hide your buildings, everything becomes zeroed out, meaning that it's not part of calculation, which means that modeler calculates only what you see in your model. If you hide it, it will not be part of the calculation. Now, going forward, I want to show you also the capability that we have added just in the latest release of modeler, and it is import of OpenStreetMap buildings. Let me go and hide this one. In this case, I will use the uh, location of downtown Manhattan, the way that Aris has all already shown you via file geolocation, add location. We have geolocated our model, and then with a click of a button, I will go to download OpenStreetMap 3D buildings. And here down, you will see something is going on, and then it will start importing buildings. Now, these OpenStreetMap buildings, they are community provided, so sometimes they might not be completely reliable. In, in case of New York, the model is really good, but when it comes to smaller towns, it might be it might not be as accurate as we need it to be. In this case, we can import GIS files if we have them available. And one thing about the OpenStreetMap is that it, it contains about 350 million buildings, buildings globally, meaning that it covers more or less all of the major cities around the globe. So let me go here and open up the GIS location. When it comes to importing GIS data, there are two prerequisites. You, have, you need to have your model geolocated, and then uh, the data that you are importing needs to be in WGS. So we have geolocated mod model already here. I will just hit import GIS data, which will open up a new window where I can set my shape file or GeoJSON. We support those two files. And in this case, I am importing buildings. I will just quickly hit import GIS layer because what's happening now is Modeler is importing about 1,100 buildings, and they are actually being imported as proper modular parametric buildings. So they contain all the information and capabilities to, to modify them. Uh, what we have here is also the mapping, because we need to let Modeler know what GIS attributes mean to uh, modular parameters, how, how they translate from attributes to parameters. So I will also go ahead and import city blocks, go ahead and click import GIS layer. You can see here that I have selected uh, city blocks and all this mapping that I have done. So on the left hand side here, we see the attributes of the shape file. In this case, we are mapping the land use, we are mapping permitted building, uh, permitted floor area ratio and permitted site coverage. Uh, and then as you can see, some of those are becoming red, meaning that there, there again is some conflict with rules of the city blocks uh, or, or the zoning ordinance and the buildings that are actually existing already there. So this is one use case where cities could use uh, SketchUp and Modeler to verify their GIS data. Now, the last thing that I want to show in this one before I hand it back over to Aris, um, I will just hide this one. There are other things that you can import, uh, such as trees. And the, the trees are actually really quick because they are uh, SketchUp components and Modeler comes with a library of those. So you can map those and by hitting import GIS layer, 
we are also getting the trees which adds a lot of visual quality to our model and as you can see here the buildings are still live modeler buildings so let me go here and all of the data that i have is now just on a bigger scale of 1100 buildings and i don't know maybe 100 city blocks before i hand it back to aris i would like to invite all of you to give modeler a try for this we have prepared you this exclusive modeler license let me go here to just show you the email to which you can reach out to us and request such license uh, if interested we are also happy to provide you with an individual training Aris, please take it from here awesome thanks Jenning. that was uh, that was fantastic thank you uh, yeah, I'm personally, uh, you know, as an urban designer, when I first saw that uh, application, I was blown away and like much of the stuff that I was doing manually with Excel, especially uh, the fact that it's now automated, it's it's quite it's quite impressive. So uh, at this stage, we're going to take some questions. And I know that uh, my colleagues have been answering to some of your questions uh, during the presentation. Let me open up my camera as well. So I actually want to just make a comment on a question from uh, I don't see I don't think we see the names. Uh, uh, there is a question that says if somebody sends out report, even though I'm guessing they mean layout file to others, is the SketchUp model also being sent? Can others then modify the model? And my colleague Josh already responded there, saying that yes. And as a matter of fact, uh, I'm going to show you how that happens right so a layout file is practically a zip folder that contains every link that is embedded in the file so if you go to file document setup you will see here all the references that are included in this file and the sketchup file is one of those and you can even edit the file from layout so if i right click there is an option here to add to sorry to open with it. so everybody that has the layout file can open up the, the file and edit it. If you don't want to do that and you just want to share your layout document as a PDF file, you can of course do that as well. If you go to file, export, you can export your uh, layout file as an image, a PDF or a DWG file. As a matter of fact, it is the best way to export in PDF in DWG um, using layout, right? So if you do want to export your top uh, like a floor plan or a section or an elevation the best way to do that is to import your sketchup model into a layout file and then export it into dwg or a pdf and it will maintain its uh, vector qualities uh, i think most of the other questions have been answered please go ahead and ask and ask anything you want uh, we still have a few minutes to go Maybe while we wait for other questions to come in, I'm going to show one more feature that I forgot to mention before, which is actually I kind of showed it here. Uh, but as we were talking about attributes in dynamic components, I wanted to show you how you can use this data to also um, annotate your drawings. So in this model, as you remember, we have created those buildings that we can read the overall area. And this is a custom attribute. So if I head over to the label, I can click on any building and this will show me a list of options here. So I can click that drop down menu and head over to my primary component that has all those custom attributes that we created before in a dynamic component. So in this case, I will select the overall area. And if I click that same button and click another building, it will do that automatically for every single building. So that's just another quick way uh, to document your urban design project using layout. And Aris, if I remember correctly, what layout also offers is if you have your model geolocated, you can do similar things to point at which location it is on on uh, globally. Is right. So by clicking on a point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, by clicking yeah. on a point. It shows Correct. you the coordinates. So this is one of the options, right? So exactly okay. what uh, Jernik said. Layout will bring up any attributes that are coming in from SketchUp, including the coordinates of a point. Mm -hmm. Which is for urban design scale projects, sometimes uh, mandatory even. Exactly. Yep. 
Yeah. There are some yes. questions for Yearney as well as I see. Okay, yeah. For is Modeler compatible with Mac platform? The answer is yes. All the functionality of Modeler is available for Mac, except at the moment uh, it lacks the Excel support. Other than that, it's on par with, with Windows version. Uh, based on There's the data. From, question, yeah. if, that's, if you import a shape file, does it construct the 3D buildings based on the data from the shape files attribute table? Yes, exactly. So this is what I was talking about. Um, so we map the attributes of the shape file. So from the attribute table, we map those values to modular parameters. And this is something that at the moment needs to be done manually, but then you can store such mapping and reuse it for other files if they have the same attribute table. So mm -hmm. that the modeler is able to, to recognize it. Yeah. There's another one uh, for you. Uh, if you receive a city map file that is in a UTM coordination system, how do you do the GIS import and then how do you ensure north is true north for shadow study purposes? So the way I would approach it is I would open it either in ArcGIS or QGIS and save it as, as WGS84. This way, Modeler will allow you to import it. Uh, when it comes to True North, uh, the engine that SketchUp has when translating the, the coordinates to local space, this uh, no, True North is already there. So actually, the model, we, which is something also you will notice when you go and geolocate your model, sometimes if you are at the border of the UTM zone, it will be a bit a bit uh, rotated. This is to, to match for the True uh, North. So this way, SketchUp assures that shadows are always correct. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, there's another question. To import buildings, trees, etc., through GeoMap, do you have to download the, the external files? I'm guessing yeah. this is related to the functionality where you imported buildings with uh, OpenStreetMaps, right? So if it's from the OpenStreetMaps, you just click button, and whatever OpenStreetMap provides is the the thing that gets imported if you're talking about the gis import yes you need to have those files locally on your computer mm -hmm. to, to import them i have another gis related question um yeah. what is the export capabilities to gis can you import twg surveys into the site so i guess those are two questions so the yeah so the as for the export capabilities to GIS you can export your your modeler model uh, to GeoJSON so it it will it will export buildings complex buildings and city blocks at the moment later we might add some more and all of those again are exported with a click of a button next to your SketchUp file so you have it there and then you can modify it further when it comes to import DVG surveys into the site you can do that natively by SketchUp, I guess. Mm -hmm. Aris can give you That's maybe correct. some input on that. Yeah, I mean it's yeah. uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you, we can. I think we support up to 2019 or maybe even 2020. Oh God, I'm not sure. Uh, I'll have to double check on that. But it is as easy as file import or just drag and drop your DWG file straight into SketchUp, and then you will have some options in uh, selecting whether or not to maintain the or the point of origin and mm -hmm. the units that you want to import. But yeah, as Yerne said, you could just bring DWG straight into SketchUp. Uh, somebody's is... requesting the demo request email, but I think this is also included in the handout, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. It is, and I have put down the email also here in the chat Perfect. window. So it's demo at modeler.com. Excellent. I think we're almost on time. We can wait for a couple of more minutes if there is any other questions. It seems like the one is also all, all, like third time is if you import a shapefile, does it construct the 3D buildings based on the data from the shapefile attribute table? I think we responded yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we did, and yeah, it is it is true. It constructs the buildings from the. Uh, shape file. Actually, we can also construct the complex building. So it's not just an extruded shape, but it can also be so. Actually, the, the building that I have shown you 
as my first model, which was which had a tower on top of it. This mm -hmm. is something that we can completely reconstruct from the shapefile or GeoJSON. Uh, there's a question about the cost of Modeler. So it starts with 50 euros per month on an annual basis. And then depending if you need a floating license or enterprise license or individual monthly license, prices differ. They are published also on our website. Very cool. Yeah. I think with that, we can wrap up. Uh, one thing I want to show to everybody uh, that is that has joined us is our next webinar session that is coming up in two weeks. It has to do with 3D modeling with point cloud data inside SketchUp. So any of you who are interested in those kind of workflows, there is a new uh, extension from Trimble, Trimble's kind of essentials that allows you to bring point cloud straight into your SketchUp model and model around those. So if you want, please register. There is a link also in the um, in, in one of the last pages of the handout that we shared with you. So please go ahead and register if you're interested. Thanks again, for all, all of you, for joining us today. It was a pleasure uh, presenting you um, those workflows for Urban Design. And we hope to see you in two weeks' time. Enjoy. Thank you. Bye-bye.